Welcome to the November 25th, 2014 meeting of the Pequannock Township Council. Uh, Mr. Delaney. In accordance with the requirements of New Jersey's Open Public Meetings Act, notice of this meeting was included in the annual meeting notice, which was filed in the office of the township clerk, posted on the bulletin board here in the municipal building, uh, posted on the, borough, uh, the township's website, published as a legal notice, and provided to all those requesting notice and providing payment in accordance with township policy. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a prayer and a moment of thanks for individuals serving our nation. Most gracious providence, we ask that you bless this governing body with an abundance of wisdom and understanding so that every deliberation will result in actions which will promote the common good and general welfare for all the people of Pequannock Township. Amen. Okay, for uh, Clerk Jay, could do roll call. Mr. Cole? Here. Mr. Phelan? Here. Mr. Vanderhoff? Here. Ms. Winterfield? Here. Mayor Florence Lynch? Here. Okay, uh, first uh, item on the agenda is normally presentations. We don't have any presentations formally uh, to present tonight, so we're going to skip right to our volunteer reports. If there is anyone in the audience that would like to uh, give a report from one of our committees, please wait to be recognized. Braca. Good evening. Uh, Rocco Salucci, uh, Chairman of Fair Housing. Uh, one thing that I'd like to say is that uh, we are in desperate need of the people that qualify for the uh, units and the fair housing. So anyone who has anybody that is interesting, just bring it forward to the secretary or call the uh, office and we'll make it available. We, uh, run the the list we're running very short. Thank you very much. You talking about purchase? Yes. Yeah, I actually there are interested people who are eligible to uh, purchase the units. We uh, need uh, at least two categories right now. I think is uh, one and two bedroom uh, low or medium. I forget which exactly which one it is. We have that on the website. We also have that um, also on the TV channel. So any help that we can get from the sin uh, from the citizen in. Uh, in town or whatever, it would be greatly appreciated. Thank you, Rocco. I actually did a reach out last week because when I realized there was units available, I wondered why someone I knew that was waiting for years did not and, go forward. And I was right. able to make that connection and put them together. A lot of them will put their name on it, even though they may not be qualified. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if they're in doubt, qualified. get in touch with our secretary. We'll be more than happy to help them out. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else, Frank? Frank Spazzeri, 35 West Franklin Avenue. Um, as you know, the council has appointed uh, people to the Solid Waste Committee, and we had our first meeting on the 21st, and I handed out a list of uh, who's on the committee and who's doing what. Me being chairman, and uh, I have a secretary, though. Thank you. Um, everybody was present, and Dave Holberg also attended the meeting and gave us our charge as to... Uh, what he's looking for in uh, results from us. And uh, I, I have a question of the council. Mm -hmm. um, now, I'm sure each of you have in your mind what you might want to see in solid waste or if you have any thoughts as to what the town should, direction should go. Spend less money. Okay, that's, not what, that's what he said too. <laughs> Uh, my, just thoughts. Uh, you can either email me or give it to Dave um, Cole. Uh, so this way we have our next meeting on the 5th. If you have any suggestions, we'd greatly appreciate your, appreciate your input. And then we'll, uh, when we come up to our decisions, then we'll come back and give it to you. Okay? That's a great idea. Thanks, Frank. Because you want to research everything and have everybody's opinion. All right, any other reports from volunteers? 
Okay, um, before we go into the next session, uh, the next part of the agenda is public comment. Um, I know a lot of you are here tonight uh, to oppose the Pilgrim uh, pipeline. I just want to make a uh, comment. If you have not heard already, this council tonight is passing a resolution for approval to oppose the construction of the proposed program pipeline. Okay, um, so that might alleviate some of your concerns. With that being said, um, we are having uh, information uh, uh, sessions with program pipe, uh, program representatives um, because we want to be able, you know, it. Like uh, Council uh, Woman Win uh, Winterfield said last meeting, this is just one step. Um, we would like to gather more information, ask questions, because if this does come down the pike, you know, we want to be able to do more, and we want to be able to know uh, what we are, um, what the risks and benefits are, if we ever get in that situation. But we are passing that resolution uh, tonight. There are no um, benefits, Melissa. Exactly, exactly. Okay, so don't but what I'm saying is there are going benefits. to be, I know Dave, uh, our township manager is going to be meeting with people, um, and the environmental commission is also going to be having a session as well, just so you know. Okay? Yes. Uh, Rocco Salucci, 153 Jacksonville Road. Simple citizen now. I uh, was a little bit disturbed for the people, uh, the um, <coughs> Board of Education, that actually took away the right for the people to vote and tell them how much money we want to spend. By changing the election to November, we as people living in town, we have no more right whether to control their budget or whatnot. I hope everybody uh, is aware of this year. They would get an automatic 2% increase automatically, whether you want to spend the money or not, whether they may have $10 million in the budget or $50 million in the budget, they automatically get an increase. So please be aware that the uh, Board of Education, from my point of view, they did not give enough time for the people to voice their opinion. I know they're scheduled for one meeting one night and they push the vote. So everybody in town should be aware of what's going on and maybe uh, somehow voice your opinion whether you agree or disagree with it. Thank Not you. That, I, yeah, I, I, I would appreciate that the resolution down. already. Excuse me? They I did. They passed the resolution already. They did. They, they, only, did. they, they only get one night. They scheduled one night. They offered for people to uh, voice their opinion. But uh, when, when, it, when it's a major thing like this that happens, they have to give a plenty of warning for the people to voice their opinion. And that, from my opinion, has not been done. Well, no. I'm in favor or against it, I won't say that, but I honestly think that they did an injustice by taking away the, the right for the people to vote on the budget. I hope they're as careful as we are. That's good. Rocco, I, I, just, I just wanted to make a comment. I did, uh, you know, see the postings on Facebook, read it in the paper. Um, it, it's... It, it's not something new. The Board of Ed has been uh, looking at this for quite some time, um, and the meeting before, the month before, they had said it would be on the agenda. Um, and, and, you know, maybe enough people don't go on a website or look at the agenda, but it was out there. It was not done behind closed doors. Between Very few people came to the meeting to oppose between it. Between you and me and the lamppost, they've still been playing some uh, uh, on the, if you go on the Channel 77, They'll be playing the February meetings even until last uh, three weeks ago. Some, sometime they play the update on what they're saying to let people know. I mean, if uh, some senior citizen like me does not have the ability to get to those meetings, you would at least have the, the, the decency to get on the TV and watch what's going on. Mm -hmm. and, and if you look back and you see in the last ten times that they played those meetings, February 20-somewhat meeting over there has been playing about five times out of the rest of it. So, uh, you know, as, so much for disclosure, I have uh, given a chance for the people to voice their opinion. If it was said that if they were going to think about it, they were going to do something like this here, then let them come on and give enough time. I mean, we waited, what, four years since this was, thing was approved. Now, all of a sudden, in one meeting, they got to take care of this here? I'm sorry. You have enough people in time that they're smart enough at least to, to judge whether it's the right thing or not. 
They should have been given the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Um, anyone else? We're in the public comment section. Yes, Nate. Or Nat. Uh, Nat Arkin. I'm a resident at uh, Cedar Crest, and I'm also a member of the um, uh, Coalition to Oppose Pilgrim Pipeline. Uh, I was prepared to make comments from my notes, but uh, based on your agenda, I will not. I will cut it short, so that's a bonus for you. I just want to thank you for listening to us and hearing us out. Uh, we really feel we got a, a proper hearing, a fair hearing, and we're delighted with the decision that the council has made. Um, as of this morning, there were 10 communities in New Jersey that had uh, voted to oppose Pilgrim. Uh, with your vote, and tonight Bloomingdale's town council has it on the agenda as well, I, I'm convinced they will go, so that will make 12 communities, and we're aware of at least two in New York State. So we're moving, we're moving in the right direction, and I think what's really important is that we have a coalition of communities. That will be the greatest strength we have to stand up to Pilgrim. So thank you again for listening to us and for making this important decision. Thank you, Nat, for all your work and bringing it to our attention. Yes. Ken Dalski, uh, 21 Winfield Drive in Parsippany. Uh, I'm also going to be very brief, but first I just want to ask you a question. Has Pilgrim asked you for the right to come on any township property for the purpose of doing surveys or soil samples? Uh, yes, I believe they have. And have you Survey. refused them permission? No, we granted the permission for surveying. You, you did. Okay. Uh, it's really important that, especially if you're passing a resolution opposing them, that you rescind that approval. Um, they need to take uh, these samples in order to be able to file uh, accurate information with the DEP. And preventing them from, it's not a benign act where they just come and dig a little hole and, you know, I realize it doesn't hurt anybody, but uh, denying them permission makes it harder for them to file with the DEP. It gives the DEP less accurate information. It makes it more difficult for the DEP to approve it. Um, if the DEP asks them to make a change in their route, even a few feet, it'll be much more difficult for them to agree because they won't have the survey in order to understand what the implications are. So uh, it, is, it is not a benign, neutral act to just let them come and, and take a sample. So I really encourage you to rescind that and uh, prevent them from taking samples. Well, I believe they've already started that process. Is that something that can be done? Mm -hmm. Well, it, it, was, it was done some time ago. Yeah. Um, and I, honestly, I can't recommend to council removing permission that would provide the information that we're looking to have uh, moving forward so that, you know, accurate information can be had not only by DEP, but by all parties who are going to be asked to make a decision. Well, all they're going to do is uh, look to see the nature of the soil and whether it's appropriate for a pipeline. Um, they're looking for things like Indian artifacts. Um, uh, I, I can't imagine, I, I don't know a lot of details about it, but I can't imagine it's important to you to find out the results of their survey. Well, it'll be interesting questions to ask in our meeting. All right, well. Uh, just be aware, I mean, many other towns have basically told them no. Um, we've been working with a lot of residents uh, all along the, the route in New Jersey and encouraging everybody to say no. Uh, they've even threatened court orders when they don't have the power to do that, which has been very, very upsetting. And uh, uh, my neighbor got a letter, and he told them, you know, stuff it. And um, they, they gave him until October 31st, and nothing has happened. So. You know, I think they're a paper tiger when it comes to this, so uh, whatever. Uh, so let me just thank you all very much for uh, planning to pass the resolution. Um, I think it's, it's important for a number of reasons. Um, in addition to building a, a strong coalition of, uh, uh, of communities, uh, it also sends signals to companies like Spectra Energy and psc and g psc and g has told us that they're very sensitive to uh, the communities and are looking to see how many pass resolutions. I mean, they've already told Pilgrim that they're not going to allow them on their right of way, but this gives them even more ammunition to stick to their guns. So, uh, you know, it's extremely important. Uh, it's also going to be very important because at some point in time, they're going to have to go try and get eminent domain. 
uh, either through the BPU or a court. And uh, we would like to have 29 communities, if not more, all standing together and having decided to oppose it uh, when that happens. I have no idea when it might be, but uh, as opposed to having a lot of communities, you know, thinking about what they want to do when that, when that occurs. So, uh, you know, it's really important to have everybody in line uh, before that happens. So uh, I applaud you for taking, you know, for going through the process. I think the process itself helps uh, build uh, a stronger resolution. Uh, in, certain, in some towns, it certainly helped build a stronger coalition of grassroots uh, residents to uh, oppose the pipeline. And uh, once you come to your decision, uh, I think you'll know it's the right decision. So thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, anyone else? Uh, yes, Henry. I'm sorry. It, is that right, Henry? Okay. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm a actor, Cedar Crest. I'm a senior citizen. I'm 89 years old. Uh, many of my colleagues are here. We may not be alive when this pilgrim issue finally gets uh, resolved. And I, I want to congratulate you for doing the right thing. And what I'm concerned about is the well-being of our children and our grandchildren and the kind of planet we're leaving them, the more we drill for oil, the more we transport it, the more we send it to market, the less anxious we are to move toward alternative energies and, and a safe world for our kids and our grandkids. And that's our concern, and we congratulate you for what you're doing tonight. Thank you. Sorry about that, Henry. Yes, come on up. <laughs> Good evening, Henry Samick, former Misty Court, Township of Uh Before I get into what I have to discuss, I have to congratulate the senior citizens, especially this last gentleman that just spoke, because it's true. The future of our families and our generations to come, uh, they don't need this kind of stuff. If you recall years ago, the Edison pipeline that blew and how many people died in the, in the, in the fire and everything else that happened down in Edison, I mean, that was a Texas pipeline, excuse me. We don't need any more of that. Anyway, to get on with what I had to talk about, I just want to say first congratu uh, congratulations. I wish everybody here on the council and the township a happy Thanksgiving. But the main issue that I came here about tonight, which is very disturbing to me, on November 8th I came back from vacation and I heard some news and I had to corroborate what I heard first before I came before the council. So Mayor Florence Lynch and the members of the council once again, I find it necessary to come before you to advise you of the reprehensible and actionable behavior of an employee of the township. Through this statement, I am placing the council and the township on notice as I am currently consulting with legal counsel in regard to my rights to pursue an action against the individual employee and the township. It has come to my attention through several sources that Township Fire Inspector Robert Van Riper has been making defamatory remarks about me and disparaging my reputation in the township. In particular, Mr. Van Riper has indicated to third parties that I have done electrical work and other work without necessary permits and without necessary licenses. His remarks made to third parties are totally false and without merit. In fact, one of these licenses that Mr. Van Riper says I lack does not even exist. A clear indication of Mr. Van Riper's lack of expertise and lack of qualifications for the job that he currently holds. Mr. Van Riper's statement, statements constitute actionable slander, and as previously stated, I have already contacted the legal counsel with regard to Mr. Van Riper's actions and whether through action or inaction the township is culpable by empowering, authorizing, or couching Mr. Van Riper with explicit or implied authority to make these statements. The bigger picture in this matter is that the council and township administration have for some time allowed an environment to evolve and remain where certain township employees have forgotten that they work for the residents Residents are treated with total disrespect and their constitutional protected rights are continuously trampled upon. This town, the township employees are allowed to act without guidance 
or limits with regard to individuals' rights. Township employees make a practice of ignoring privacy and property rights of citizens, as well as violating the law relating to illegal search and seizure. Township employees feel that they have the unfettered right to enter upon private property without permission, despite the posting of no trespassing signs and in the absence of emergency circumstances in order to illegally collect evidence for use in actions against residents. Finally, township employees continually violate the right, the civil rights of residents. And I hold this council and township administration responsible because you have all allowed township employees to act in this manner, totally unfettered. Further, this council and township administration have allowed this state of affairs to remain without any repercussions or reprimand to the involved employees. Finally, this shall be noticed to all of you that I, for one, will no longer stand by while the residents of this township who pay their salaries, the salaries of the employees, and who voted to elect you, see their rights trampled upon. It is time for this council to have the courage and strength of the will to put an end to this situation. We do not live in a police state. We live in a country where every citizen's constitutional rights need to be protected. And if these rights are in any way violated, it is your obligation and duty as our elected officials to ensure that this behavior of the township employees is curtailed and eliminated. Further, it is your duty and obligation to ensure that township employees who are guilty of actionable behavior are reprimanded, punished, or terminated. I am hopeful that this council will not continue to sit idly by and will take action on these issues. Thank you for your time. Henry, thank you for bringing all this to our attention, and I'm sure it's something that we'll work on with uh, our township manager. I mean, when Thank signs you. are posted on people's property, at the entrance of their property, and those rights are violated by our town employees, those employees should be terminated. That's my own opinion. Okay, Thank Henry, you. just Thank you. Henry, one comment. Um, you know this form of government we have here, right? We are not responsible for the employees. those employees. We can't fire those employees. We only can fire one employee or two. I understand that. Okay, just so you're aware, you know what type of government we have. So it's not like we can say, okay, that particular individual, we right. want him fired. It doesn't work that way. You know that. No, but you should. You can sure we make sure know who to talk to. That okay. these things do not continue. We will talk to. Enough is enough. We'll talk to the township manager. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes. Maureen Bratt from Pompton Lakes, New Jersey. Um, I would just like to be enlightened. Why would a town allow a company, a private company, a private company that's going to put in a pipeline, come in and do a survey? To what avail? I just don't understand why you would let them come in and just survey the land. Sure, I'm going to, lay, I'm going to actually refer that to our township manager who is involved in those conversations. When, when the township was initially approached, and the, they are still in the investigation and, and planning stage, um, it, I can't re make a recommendation to the governing body as to whether something is good or bad or should be approved or opposed without information. So in the inf information gathering stage, it seems prudent, regardless of what the issue is, regardless of a personal feelings towards a company or a, a pipeline or any other, any other project, it still seems prudent to have information gathered and provided. But the information is to their benefit, not the town's benefit. We don't know that. I mean, the, uh, this, ge How this gentleman actually made a very good point. Suppose they do find Indian artifacts, which, quite frankly, in Pequonic Township, is, is not that far off base. Th that in itself will, will create, you know, a, an entirely different set of circumstances. It, but the information needs to be gathered. To, to make a decision without information and based on 
you know, a guttural reaction. I, I can't make a recommendation to the governing body based on that. Under what guise did they ask to do the survey? There was no guys. They said that they were in the planning stages of a potential pipeline and needed access to uh, an easement, an existing easement through uh, municipal property. And uh, it's not unlike... It just seems like that should have like perked up your ears to say a pipeline through our town and then discuss it before... I mean, was it discussed before that permission was given, or is that something that doesn't happen? It just... Well, because it's... Permission it, is given. The, the permission was given to access township property. That That's an administrative function. So. That did not have to go through the council. Okay. Perhaps it should in the future. Well, now that we're aware of it, we yeah. certainly will keep our eye open. It was something we weren't aware of before, and... So decisions are made. Yeah, this is kind of how they they do this. They come in very quietly. Mm -hmm. Town residents don't know what's going on. This is the first pipeline coming through that we've had forewarning of and been able to address in this manner. So it's great. I think it's wonderful that you're passing this resolution. Pompton Lakes is the next place I intend to go. Um, but I just... I hate to think that they get their foot in the door, that maybe it's a little hard to close the door sometimes. So, But thank you for the resolution, and thank you for listening to us. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Oh, yes, this gentleman here. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. James Gallagher, and I'm part of the uh, uh, Gray Brigade from Cedar Crest. If you could try to speak up a little bit more yeah, into the... I will, thank you. Uh, James Gallagher, Dr. James Gallagher, I'm part of the Gray, Gray Brigade from Cedar Crest, which very much appreciates the indication that the uh, opposition resolution will be passed. Um, given the uh, statement that Madam Mayor, Mayor made earlier, I wonder what would be the purpose of further discussions um, with the pipeline company and why would uh, uh, further information be needed mm. and would that information that you might be get through further meetings um, have any impact upon the uh, existing or the presumably existing uh, resolution opposing the uh, pipeline? The way I looked at it was we're, we're passing the resolution to oppose it. However, you know, do we know if that's going to work? We, we need to understand and be able to ask questions. If, the, if, if something like this was to come to be, I want to know. I want to be able to ask questions. And, you, you know, you guys have been feeding us good information. And, um, you, know, we, you know, we can ask, you know. What benefit is this? There is no benefit. Time? There is it's none. No exactly. Benefit. No, I'm agreeing. There is none. Don't and, say what uh, benefit. But we is. need to collect information, be able to ask about uh, hazards and health, and you know what dangers, and you know, and that was the reason for it. But after the discussion at the last meeting, we did determine as a council that we wanted to oppose the. Uh, the I think pipeline. that the, the meeting was set up prior to it was. us um, coming up with a resolution to against this. Right, I, it doesn't I, matter whether you need right, to or not. I don't know if that meeting is necessary in my opinion, because as far as I'm concerned, they shouldn't be digging here, right. period. Um, so, but it was something that was set up prior to That's true. these members from your community, Cedar Crest. There's no coming harm from. in having all the information. That was my you know, thought. I don't, making a decision, you should have all the information possible. Right, but I don't want to encourage these people either. Well, you're not encouraging. You're collecting information because the ultimate decision is not in this level. No. So uh, my concern would be... all the information available, whatever comes down the pipeline... <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> no pun intended. To kind of Whatever comes down the road, yeah. we need all the information that we can get. My concern would be, uh, with this further information that you might collect, have any uh, have any impact on changing the opposition no. position? 
opposition is not going to change. No, I don't believe so. Period. And we appreciate it. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Um, next on the agenda would uh, be ordinances for introduction. Tonight we don't have any new ordinances to introduce, so we're going to pass, go right on to resolutions What's for... public hearings? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I jumped right over that. But we do have uh, two public hearings tonight. Um, one is ordinance number 2014-29, and one is ordinance 2014-30. I'll ask uh, our uh, clerk, Jay Delaney, to... Uh, Read those? Yes, the first uh, ordinance number 2014-29 entitled Bond Ordinance Providing for the West Sunset Road Water Main Extension in and by the Township of Paquanic in the County of Morris, New Jersey, appropriating $310,000 therefore and authorizing the issuance of $310,000 bonds or notes of the Township to finance part of the cost thereof and directing the special assessment of part of the cost thereof. This ordinance was uh, previously introduced, posted, has been published. Uh, additionally, notice has been provided to the uh, uh, proposed assessed properties um, and is ready for a hearing at this time. Okay. Are there uh, any comments from the council on this ordinance? None here. I'm good. You're good? You're good. Okay. Um, if anyone in the audience, uh, would you, uh, our township manager would like to? If you would, can you just by show of hands how many people are here for that? Because if there are people here, I'll make that. Okay, there are a few people here for that particular uh, ordinance, so I'm going to let the township manager talk. Uh, just by way of uh, kind of an overview, which the council already has, um, I'm sure that you're aware, if you live in the area, that you know uh, improvements to West Sunset have been requested by you know the residents and uh, not been given serious consideration for a, a long period of time and. Uh, we've been working for some time uh, on a plan to try and address uh, the deficiencies that exist there uh, and come up with a method that they can be you know, financed and, and accomplished in a reasonable time frame. So uh, the event that kind of spurred this is uh, there's uh, obviously a development that's ongoing that was going to require uh, water be brought to it anyway. So that is being discussed tonight is just for the water component. The long-term plan for West Sunset is to uh, improve the road. Could, the, the road doesn't currently have a full legal status of a municipal road within the township, which is why it is left in um, such disrepair. disrepair. And we hope to, to fix that um, by going through this process. Uh, in a three to four year time frame, our plan is to you know, reconstruct the road with water, uh, sewer, uh, appropriate drainage, uh, stormwater drainage, uh, an appropriate width and site distances, which is going to require some right-of-way acquisition. So it's a relatively big project and not something that we could accomplish in a very short time frame. So right now we're dealing with the water issue because it didn't make sense to have one property owner you know, install a very small water line if we were just going to install a municipal water line in a couple of years anyway. That's why we're doing this part of it here tonight, and the, and this ordinance only deals with the water component. At some point in the future, uh, two to three years from now, um, once we've identified the right of way that needs to be acquired and have a full design plan, uh, we'll determine what the cost is, and there will be another appropriation by the governing body to deal with all of the work. So this is a, a long-term plan, and the assessments that are contemplated here, we need to do this notice now before the work is done and uh, some properties are connected so that we have the opportunity to assess all properties for the eventual improvement. Uh, that assessment will not occur until after all of the improvements are done. Uh, so if we're looking at three to four years for the improvements, we're probably looking at five to six years for the assessments to be put in place and a, a 10 year payback period after that point in time. So um, that's kind of the overview and I hope I've answered probably some of the questions that you've come, but please feel free to. All right, thank you, Dave. Um, if anyone in the audience has uh, questions or comments on this ordin ordinance, uh, please, uh, Come to the microphone and state your name and record name and address for the record. Anyone? 
No? Everybody's good with what they've heard? Oh, here we go. Maybe there'd be one. Mike Tizio, 32 West Sunset. Hi, Mike. Does anybody have any idea what the anticipated cost of the entire project will be? Um, no, and that's that's part of what we're evaluating. Um, what uh, my charge to the township engineer has been essentially give me three levels of service, um, so to speak, because uh, we know that the stormwater issue is going to be uh, require a lot of digging, and it, there's rock and there's yeah, you know, there's a lot involved in that part. It, it would be nice to have a full width road, but acquiring right of way might end up being expensive and there there's some very tight turns and there's a lot of issues. So we're, we're looking at, you know, what's the absolute minimum? What's the, you know, what would it take to build it to municipal standards? And what's kind of that middle point? And we'll, we'll cost out all three. And that'll be part of the, you know, the discussion um, probably in about 18 months in determining what the ultimate plan is going to be, um, what the what that cost is going to be. Because if it's, uh, obviously we need a, a price point that's going to be affordable for both the township and, and the residents. And are we going to be responsible for the entire cost of the project? Um, that will be up to the governing body to determine the, the metting out of the costs. But I anticipate that... Um, We'll have some type of public hearing to kind of bring residents in to show them what the plans are, what's involved, what the different levels are. And I, I would anticipate that, like I said, in about 18 months as part of the planning process, so that there is public input, uh, because there is going to be a cost component on the homeowners. Yeah, because the challenge is if it's a $2 million project and there's 12 properties, you're talking a couple hundred thousand dollar assessment. and. That's we understand. We need to strike a balance between what's affordable and what is practical. practical. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The project's being handled very similar to you, the way you would do a sewer assessment or anything else. Yeah. Yeah, I understand. But would it make sense to do everything lot, right. all at one time rather than do a piecemeal? Here's three hundred well, ten thousand. The, the only piecemeal part is the that water. this piece of the water line that is servicing the one property is being installed. All of the other improvements will be constructed at the same time. But we needed to do the notice on the water line now before the first piece was installed. So sewers coming in with the rest of the project? Um, the plan is? We're, we're going to look at sewers be, because of the, the elevation change. We don't know if we'll be able to actually sewer everybody or not. That's going to be one of the decision points as well. And uh, municipal water is going up right municipal now? Municipal water will, will uh, right now it will go up to... Uh, there'll be a fire hydrant in the vicinity of where the, the Bruno Lane driveway, um, that fire hydrant will be installed currently. Um, so there'll be an immediate benefit to the entire neighborhood. Eventually the entire water line will be run all the way up and looped to where the county has a, uh, a fire hydrant all the way at the top. So I'll be paying an assessment right now? No, the, no assessments will be levied until after all of the improvements are done. Oh. So okay. it might be three to five years. Correct. But there will be a lien, right, Dave? Yeah, there'll be a pending assessment. So um, any tax search would show a pending assessment that will not have a specific value tied to it. So it's the 310000 that's authorized just for the water up to Bruno Lane? No, the three hundred ten will actually cover all of the water for the whole thing um, through a, an, an agreement that we have with the developer. He's going to run... Um, the line to his property and the added cost of the fire hydrant and the size of the line, uh, we're going to reimburse him for. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Uh, anyone else have questions or comments on this ordinance? Okay. Um, is there a motion to adopt this ordinance? I'll make that motion. I'll second. Okay. Um, Mr. Delaney, can we take roll call? Mr. Cole? Yes. Mr. Phelan? Yes. Mr. Vanderhoff? Yes. Ms. Winterfield? Yes. Mayor Florence Lynch? Yes. Uh, next ordinance is uh, for public hearing is 2014-30. Uh, Jay, if you could read that. Yes, this is uh, an ordinance authorizing the execution of a contract for the purchase of Block 4105, Lot 3, in the name of Maria Cecilia Catelli, 
and I believe the council has the uh, the contract as well as the uh, contract summary information has been provided. Correct. Um, council members, any comments? Okay. Anyone in the audience have any comments or questions on this ordinance? All right, can I have a motion, please? I'll make a motion to approve ordinance 2014-30. Go ahead, Kathy. I'll second it. <laughs> <laughs> can we have roll call, please? Mr. Cole? Yes. Mr. Phelan? Yes. Mr. Vanderhoff? Yes. Ms. Winterfield? Yes. Mayor Florence Lynch? Yes. Um, and I took this out of order before. Uh, normally, next will be ordinances for introduction. We do not have any uh, for tonight. So we're going to move right to resolutions for approval. Uh, we have four for tonight. So, uh, Jay, if I could ask you to read uh, all four of those. Yes, resolution number R2014-224, authorizing tax office refunds over payments or cancellations. Number 225, authorizing the discharge of an affordable housing program mortgage. Number 226, posing construction of the, of the proposed Pilgrim Pipeline. And uh, resolution R2014-227, approving payment of the itemized claims as set forth on the November 21 bill list. All right, thank you. Um, are there any comments on any of these resolutions from council members? Kathy? No questions. Dave? No questions. And uh, Rich? No questions. And Jay? No. Okay. Um, can I have a motion to adopt these resolutions? I would make a motion to adopt 2014-224. Can I have a second? Oh. I'll second it. Okay. Roll call, please, Mr. Delaney. Mr. Cole? Yes. Mr. Phelan? Yes. Mr. Vanderhoff? Yes. Ms. Winterfield? Yes. Mayor Florence Lynch? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Uh, next, uh, we don't have any uh, discussion items for this this evening, correct? Or do we? Uh, the, yeah, the only one I have is um, the uh, based on the discussion we had at the last meeting, there are four candidates that we'd like to bring in for uh, uh, interview by uh, the council. So if you could provide me with uh, two dates next week um, and give me about an hour and a half a block of time in the evening for two different dates. We'll schedule those. Uh, we'll need to advertise them as executive session. So, Dave, you don't want to do it next week. You just want the dates that were available. No, he's thinking next you week. Want to do it next week? I, if you give me the dates, he's trying to get something to work. Because then I need to contact the people. If I can schedule them on one night, I will. Um, but if yeah, there are conflicts that some of the candidates have, I, what, I may need two nights because one has to come. All right, so you'd like something the first week of December? Uh, and uh, you get it done next week, otherwise, you know, don't and the first, the following week, right. it wouldn't be more. All right, so we'll give you dates for the first week of December and the first and the second week of December. Dave, can I make a suggestion? Why don't we do it on the second Tuesday in December, which is the 8th, I believe. That's and just do it early? 6 o'clock. Uh, that's the 9th. The 9th, you mean? It's the 9th. I, I'm a little okay late. with that. That doesn't give you, because we already have a meeting scheduled. It doesn't give a lot of leeway for um, six to seven thirty. That's an hour and a half. Well, seven. It's seven. Uh, seven. seven. I'm sorry. <laughs> for four people. Does everybody know how uh, what their schedule looks like, or do they need to look at their calendars? Second, 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 All right. Maybe we could do something on the first or. First is planning board. We can't do it. Second. Oh, okay. Third. Yeah, that doesn't work for me. <laughs> well, the, the third could work. The third could work. <laughs> We'll email you tonight. If you can email me with a grid of your availability yeah. over the next two weeks, I, I will. All right, you'll figure it out. And you would like, and you would like those uh, time schedules to be any time after six. Yeah, it, let, let's try and do it early evening. Okay. Um, okay. Six thirty, no later than eight. Okay, great. Thank you. All right, that's it for uh, discussion items. Okay, um, next on the agenda uh, would be our reports and notices. I have, um, some, I have a question, Melissa. And yes, if, uh, yeah, there's quite a few of them on there, so if you have... Uh, yeah, the third one from the bottom, the Mars County uh, Freeholders for the Historic Preservation. Yes. Uh, I spoke to, um, at Engelbar, and I asked for a recommendation, and I also yes. would like to recommend Robert uh, Seferic, He's a commandant of the Merchant Marine, retired, and also been on the Historic Commission. He's on his second term. I think he'd be a great recommendation that we send in 
Ed's not interested. I did have a question. Was this on the board. He's, right? Oh, he's this at is large. An additional person. Yeah, and it doesn't mean that he'll be chosen, and but they're asking, they're soliciting for region. If you look at the map, right. region three. Right, and that was one of the things I was trying to figure out if it was uh, just Ed's reappointment that we would do, or in addition. No, I believe it's in it is. Addition. I would go with Kathy's because Ed is at large, and then right. this would be for that. Someone is stepping right. down. Right, and he may not get on it, but I think we should definitely put a right. name in. And what was Robert's last name? Safarik, S-A-F-A-R-I-K. And he's on the Historic Commission. Yes, I, okay. Because that's they, they had some requirements, and by speaking to Ed, it seems that even if you put the names in, they may follow up and now ask for resumes and backgrounds, because they sometimes right. they're looking for a specific background. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, uh, no, I... Uh, I agree with that, and okay. I did receive something, so if that's a good recommendation and you've talked to Ed about it, I think that's great. Okay. Yeah. Everybody else okay with that? Yeah, because there's a deadline by the 8th that yeah. has to be in. Yeah, yeah. I saw that. Okay. So we should send something tomorrow just to be able to say something. Yeah. Yep, I can do that. Thank you. That's it. That's all I have all right, for the reports, reports and notices. And notices. Um, all right, anyone else on reports and notices? We're good? All right, I guess we will skip right to the manager's report. Uh, after having reported a couple weeks ago that we expected uh, Jefferson Street to be completed by Thanksgiving, um, unfortunately, uh, we're disappointed with the work effort by AJM contractors in their reconstruction. Um, they have not honored several commitments they made uh, to meet various deadlines. The project was supposed to be complete this week, and actually with the... Uh, with, with the weather, there's no reason they couldn't have had it done. They just haven't put the effort in. So uh, we're going to be issuing a, uh, uh, an unsatisfactory uh, work performance report uh, based on their lack of effort. Um, our FEMA HMGP acquisition grant has been given a three-month extension. It was uh, scheduled to expire December, mid-December. Uh, it's now extended through March, which will give us an opportunity to close on uh, a handful of final properties that are in the pipeline, uh, including one that you authorized this evening. Was that something that we had to request, or are they just... No, we had, we had to request that. Um, and just thanks to all of our emergency services for an excellent job at the Fire and Aquatic Avenue last week. The response was well-coordinated among all the agencies, and they all did a uh, wonderful job in extinguishing the fire and the subsequent investigation. Okay, Dave. Thank you. Anybody have any questions for Dave? We're good? Okay. Um, Jay, do you have anything for your council report? No, we're good. Good? Okay. And how about you, Rich? No, we're good. <laughs> the new statement of the month. Um, Kathy? No, nothing. And uh, Dave? Frank stole my thunder. Or not Frank. Uh, Rocco? Um, Rocco? Rocco. Frank stole my thunder about the uh, open solid waste in so. Right. I'll try you get there. <laughs> Okay. Um, if you do have any recommendations, either let myself know or the committee know. So. I want to pay less. Yeah, and the only thing. I heard you. Pay less. <laughs> I got it on the calendar. Rich wants less. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the only thing I was going to say is make sure as liaisons that we really encourage our committees to put in their volunteer applications for any of those um, empty vacant mm -hmm. seats. Um, also go through and make sure... Uh, not just for the reappointments, but you might also have a spot or two on a committee that wasn't that's open. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're trying to do everything we can to encourage uh, people to submit their applications. What's um, the deadline? The deadline. December 1st, if you were on a committee yes. right now, and December 15th, if you're uh, a newbie. Wow, those dates are going to come up. Yeah, they're going to come up very fast, especially with uh, the holidays right here. Um, other than that, I don't really have anything else. I just wanted to um, thank everyone for coming and uh, wish everyone a, uh, a very happy uh, Thanksgiving and enjoy the holidays, and let's hope we don't get too much snow. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I know. I know. That was just my council report. Well, in case people didn't want to stay. Um, we just, that was my announcement. Um, anyone for public comments? Anybody else want to come up for anything? Yes. Uh, Henry? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, Henry Samick, Forestry Court, Township of Uh 
I met actually this weekend just by accident. I, I'm here. sorry. I kind of made it sound like it was the end of the meeting and I was just making an announcement. I'm sorry, go ahead. I, I met this, this past weekend by accident a commissioner of the Passaic Valley Water Commissioner, uh, Don Kuzer. Mm -hmm. And Don and I had a very, very frank discussion. The pipeline for the, um, the 14 and a half mile pipeline for the um, tunnel for the floodwaters, mm -hmm. that design is already in place, it's already been paid for, it's there. What the problem is, is we need our representative in Congress, Rodney Frillingheisen, to get off his rump and help. And the only way you're going to do that is you're going to have to light a fire under his rump, and by doing that, by resolution. So if you're going to pass a resolution, pass a resolution that's going to hopefully have some kind of an effect because we helped get him elected, he is our representative, and by all means he should be notified and put on notice that either you get off your rump and do something about that flood tunnel, or we're going to have to look for another representative who will, in fact, get off his rump and do what's necessary for the residents, not only of Pequannock Township, but of the whole Passaic Valley River Basin. Thank you. Thank you, Henry. Thank you very much. Uh, did anyone else? Did anyone else want to come up? Yes, Rocco. <laughs> Rocco Salucci, 153 Jacksonville Road. I, uh, I have to apologize. I wanted to make a, uh, something else uh, known about the fair housing. We have almost uh, achieved, uh, I would say, about 99% of the people that have complied with. Mm -hmm. We have only one, and that is something that we can't even discuss about it. But the rest of it was either brought to court or in the process of uh, going after them or whatnot. I'm very, very happy to hear, and the congratulations should go with the help to the manager and the rest of the people that they give us that help. I don't just come over here and tear people down. I also like to give, uh, you know, uh, credit to where credit is due. Uh, there is a, uh, another thing that we discussed at the committee, which was to try to get two, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, instead of uh, effective member alternates, uh, last meeting that we had, we decided against it. The whole idea was trying to get uh, people and not to force them to come all the time. By having an alternate in place would have been make it easier. So uh, the people that we were talking to, they said they will be able to be available at least to six, eight meetings, and that's more than sufficient to fill up the gap. So leave the stuff the way, I mean, the committee is the way it is right now, if it's okay with you guys. So you're recommending if you don't have enough people for the full term, you would uh, c keep the alternates? No, no, no. no, no, no. I'm, I'm recommending to resign that what? don't change anything, right. just leave the way it is. Okay. Leave it the way it is, Rock. Leave right. the, the way it is, yeah. Okay. Very um, good. I have, I have one other question concerning the uh, uh, 2014 to 24. Can somebody give me a little up uh, top on it? I know it's self-explanatory. Can you give a little Which one? Little I'm sorry. The one about the affordable housing. Um, discharge of a mortgage. Oh, sure. yeah. I, I can. Yes. Yeah. When somebody sells their unit. You know how we put the mortgages on to secure right. the interest. When somebody sells their unit, we have to take that mortgage off. Correct. Right. Yes. Anymore. And that's all we're doing here. Okay. For somebody else. All right. Yeah. It sounds a little more complicated than that. Like we're having, and by the way, we are having a problem uh, trying to get uh, financing for the uh, fair housing unit. Yeah. That's one of the major problems. So, anybody in the world that listen, or I mean, at least in Pequannock, hears about this year, whatever they can do to help, really appreciate it. Thank you very much for you. Thank you, Rocco. Oh, Happy we got Thanksgiving. Happy, Happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Uh, Louise? I don't know how so many people want to 16 Rowland Road. Um, last Tuesday, uh, I, was, I received a phone call from one of my neighbors, first phone call of this type in the 28 years I'm on the block, there was a bear sighting. Now I know, I've heard it before, it's happened in other areas, other towns, etc. cetera. Uh, first thing I asked my neighbor was, did you call the police department? Yes, what did they say? It's wildlife, we can't do anything about it. This to me is not acceptable. 
Other towns get themselves on the 6 o'clock news when there's a bear up a tree. They got a SWAT team, uh, all kinds of tranquilized guns. And, and you all know it. You all know it. It's Mawa, it's Wyckoff, it's this town, it's that town. Why, when it happens here, it's dismissed. And this is the second time this month that I've heard of comments from the police department that, in my book, are not acceptable. This is not acceptable. There are children, there are they're, they're people. Yeah, it, is it, that the process? These are wild animals. I'm not talking about the deer. Yeah. I won't even mention. I wouldn't even dare. Yeah. But a bear, that's, that's yeah. something to be concerned about. I don't think we should be getting an answer like that. It's wildlife. Can't do a thing about it. You know, just like the signs on the turnpike. One hour parking, we can't enforce it. It's twice in one month that the police department went like this. It's not acceptable. Yeah. And I want to see something done about it. Well, I appreciate you bringing that up. I do want to ask our township manager, is that the correct process that they don't get involved well, they, in? They, yeah, they, our local police cannot get involved. It's a, it's a state wildlife issue, and only if the bear poses a, you know, an right. immediate threat. The, the, the reality is bears are extremely common. It, it's not a couple. Mm -hmm. They're here mm -hmm. constantly. Mm -hmm. um, they're... If, if you look at the, the bear, bear propagation over the last 30 years, they're here in Morris County, they're mm -hmm. in Maguana Township, and, and they're here on a regular basis. Um, and we honestly, we can't have police officers just running around after them. The, the, the response is and should be, um, if you see a bear, stay away from it. Make sure that you know, your home and food are secured. Don't do anything to annoyed or attracted, once the bear becomes um, even slightly aggressive or is treed, you know, th those are the events that will cause additional action. You know, municipal officials will then call the state who has the proper equipment and authority, and actually I, our, our own local fire department has been involved mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. untraining several bears. If you look at their ladder truck, they've got little bear stamps on the number of bears they've removed from trees. So, um, And I think that is the process. I mean, when you see it on the news, it's when the bear is up in the so trees for like two what, hours. In other words, that's yeah. what the difference is, because this bear was seen in, in um, two of the backyards, two, it, two it, yards on the block. All it's do, it doing is, yes. is moving. Right. The, you just have to let it be. And, and the, the less interference, the better. J okay. Just allow it to move freely. As I said, it's the first in 28 years. In fact, the other first thing that happened, just to tell you as a joke, I always put my brights on before I go down Riverside. So I was making the right-hand turn to Riverside. I could have swore it was a dog. That's how big it was. It was a skunk. Mm -hmm. But it was so big. I mean, they have been fed well. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks. I just want to make a comment. It's interesting, you know, that you bring up the bear thing, and we were talking about There's deer. Just like we have a, a huge deer population, and they get they get killed all 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 the time by cars. And I had to, and I had to make a call last week to the police department because I wasn't sure what to do. Um, because a uh, somebody hit a deer on 23, and then it, somebody must have dragged it over to our parking lot at my office, and then somebody came and chopped the head off. Oh. So I did call the police department. They did um, respond. They, they not not they didn't respond there. What they do is they in, uh, fax into what is it county the county, and they did eventually come. But they said be patient. It's going to take a while. I mean, it took almost a week before they were able to remove it. Because it's and, a lot. And just so you know, I mean, if there is some indication that the bear is in a place that is going to cause an issue, um, like near a school at the time when school is starting or ending, right. yeah, the police will respond and they'll keep an eye on it. Um, but that's all they're going to do is watch to make sure that it just continues on its path. Thank you. Anyone else? Oh, we're still going. Hi, I'm Marion Better, 775 near Pumpton Turnpike. I just want to say thank you for opposing the pipeline. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Okay, I'll go back to. Uh, do we have anything for closed session tonight? Okay. Um, so can let's do it. We'll make a motion now. <laughs> Give, oh, do we have minutes to approve tonight? I don't. Okay, please, because we do have to catch up on our uh, minute approvals here. So if I can have a motion to adjourn. All right, all in favor? Aye. Thank you, everyone.